Gibbo presents. In 2011, Protégé made reggae fans around the world take notice when he dropped his debut album, The Seven Year Itch. On February 12th, he released his follow up efforts, The Eight Year Affair, which features hit singles such as Who Them A Program, Kingston Be Wise, and This Is Not A Marijuana Song. I recently chatted to the man from St. Elizabeth and began by asking him if he could explain the meaning of the album's title. The meaning of the title is the continuation of my first album, Seven Year Itch was the eight year affair. The affair naturally comes after the itch, so it was a continuation of the name to tie in the first story with the second one. How long did it take to record the album and where was it recorded? I recorded the album. The majority of the album I recorded in the space of about a month at Don Carleone's Hitmaker Studio in Cherry Gardens, Jamaica. Um, the bulk of it, as I said, was done in a month. I had done about four or five songs prior to that month. But we started to really work on that record in September and finished it um, in early October. In August and finished it early September. Was the album originally scheduled to be released in 2012? I feel like there was a big gap between when I first heard it was on its way and when it actually got released. Five singles which appear on the Eight Year Affair were released before the album. Do you feel this is the best model to follow when it comes to releasing material? Singles followed by the album as opposed to the album followed by singles? Um, it's different. I, I don't think I'll do it on the same way again. But um, what happened was that I wouldn't really say singles from the album were released. It's like when, when some of the songs came out, they weren't necessarily slated for the album, if you get me. And then, after I went on tour and I saw my one song and some other songs out there, I decided I didn't want to leave them off the project. Uh, but I, I do feel that I'd rather to have the album and then release the singles after, ideally, and uh, probably move more towards that format from now on. At the same time, though, if you have a hit single which is released prior to an album, it can act as a great advert for that album, so it's not always a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a risk, of, I think that's a risk, of course. It's just that um, some of the times um, it works for you in that you're re-energizing that single, and some of the times it may work against you, so it's to really try to find the balance. As I said, um, I'd rather, from this point on, you know, have the album and then release the singles when, you know, very much, much closer to when the album is coming out. Who Them A Program was released almost a year ago in March 2012. Do you think if a single is released too far in advance of an album, that there's a danger that by the time the album drops, people may have forgotten about it, even if they bought the single and liked it. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky. And uh, it's only my second album, so I have a lot more learning to do. So I'm just trying to learn from, from everything that's happening now and make the right decisions as we move forward. 
Tessan Chin, Chris Watts, Romain Virgo and Toy all feature on The Eight Year Affair. How do you decide which artists you want to collaborate with when making an album? When you ask another artist to do a song with you, do you already have an idea in your heads of what you want the song to sound like? Or do you prefer to just go into the studio with them and see what happens? In my opinion, your material is different to that of any other artists. And there's not many artists who I can say that about. Another artist who I feel is the same in this respect is Chronix. So I found it particularly interesting that you two had worked together alongside Sizzler and Kabaka Pyramids on Selassie Soldiers, a track which doesn't feature on the album. Were you immediately drawn to this collaboration, working with these three artists on one track? Um, well, well, for Kabaka now, I, I made him produce his first CD, Rebel Music, together, so... We've been friends for a minute now and we have worked together, you know what I mean, very frequently, so that was always, and it's always a pleasure to work with him. Chronix, no, I actually knew him before he started to put out music, so he actually helped me to produce some of the songs on Kabaka's first EP also, so the three of us basically have a good relationship, so it, you know, we always are going to do work together, we have, we have more stuff together that no one hears yet. And the song has a strong following online already. Yeah, man, but that's just the strength that, you know, you have in unity. When all of us come together and do something, it's going to be, it's going to get more strength than if we do it individually, you know? Another song which doesn't feature on the Eight Year Affair is the Yardcore California remix of This Is Not A Marijuana Song which features Wiz Khalifa. Could you tell me how this remix came about? Uh, well, that, that remix was totally Yardcore's idea. I mean, he kind of, he kind of, you know, knew of the, the Wiz Khalifa song and, and had the mashup it and he decided to do one of those, you know, in Brooklyn, New York City style remixes where you just kind of be real creative and then on top of that, no, he had the idea to do the video and we have a real talented team of young videographers down here that kind of put together like a video remix of it and it just kind of came out and was 
doing really well, you know, the my style over the hip hop rhythms kind of sounded natural and fitting with what he was doing also. You mentioned the video for the remix there. One thing I've noticed is that all of your videos are of a very high standard and it appears you put a significant amount of time, thoughts and money into making them. How important is it to have a good video to accompany a hit single? And, of course, we now live in a time where many people first discover songs via YouTube or music video channels instead of on the radio or in a dance like they may have in the past. Were all the tracks on the Eight Year Affair, except for This Is Not A Marijuana Song, produced by Don Corleone? Yes, yes. A lot of artists work with many producers when they are making an album. Do you feel that by primarily working with one, that your albums sound like one piece of work as opposed to a compilation of singles? Yeah, I, I do think so, I do think so. And um, the only other way, the only other way I think to get a cohesive song is if like, I'm an executive producer like myself and, and go to different producers and kind of formulate the entire plan, you know what I mean? And I wasn't at a, I'm not at a point with my first tour because I wanted to do that. So it's like working with Don and this album was let me be able to to kind of, you know, have a, a set direction over the music, the, the, the musicianship of it, and even working with the same um, musicians on it also, for the most part. So um, that's something that I, you know, first two albums I wanted to do in that fashion. In the future, will you always stick to working with one producer for your albums and work with other producers on rhythms and singles? Who knows, who knows. Um, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting time right now because my second album is out and from when I did my first, I've been concentrating on my second. Um, I don't want to say what exactly I'm going to do because I have my band now, the Indignation, and we make a lot of music, and there are a lot of producers that I've seen that have approached me and who I want to work with also. So I'm going to take some time right now and make sure that my next move, which is a very crucial move, is well thought about and decisive when it happens. Don Corleone is your cousin, and your mother, Lorna Bennett is also your manager. What are the advantages and disadvantages of mixing family and work? Um, 
Most of the times you work with family, you're 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 seen in in a way as family. You know what I mean? We don't step back a lot of the time and realize that um, you know what the responsibilities are that each individual really has in the present world. Um, working with my mom has been challenging, but I would rather have nobody um, been my manager because she was there from day one. She really cares for me as an individual, and her main focus is my well-being first. And it's rare to have that as from a manager, where usually a manager is mainly interested in getting your career and making you money. But my mom's main interest is about my well-being. And, um, working with Don in the studio has been has been challenging also, but he's a perfectionist, and I, and I know that when I come out of the booth. Uh, are there any plans to release the Eight Year Affair on CD or vinyl, or are those formats extinct as far as your concerns? No, no, I love vinyl. I love vinyl. I really want it. I wanted my first one on vinyl also, but it didn't work out. For the people who, you know, like that still and are still interested. And we also have hard copies on C D and and I'm looking to place them over Europe in the next couple of months. So you still feel it's worthwhile getting the hard copies pressed as opposed to just going down the iTunes route? Yeah, I do think so because some people want something they can hold, they can show somebody something physical to say, you know, this meant this to them or whatever. Someone may want it to give their child 20 years from now and want something physical. You can't really touch, you know, and basically, it, 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 and there's a sense of, it's like me right now, I, I, I love reading and I, I just don't want to give up on books. I don't want to go, like, to the Kindle or everything. I want to have a book so I can feel the weight of it in my hand and, I think people want to have that in, um, it, when it comes to music. Protégé's album, The Eight Year Affair, is out now on iTunes. I encourage you all to go and purchase a copy and support quality reggae music. Gibbo. 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 Gibbo.